So what Paul said, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I started to say that in the last video and I didn't finish it, praise God. Anyway, what Paul had said was, he says, what we share with you is in part. And you have to catch a hold of what he's saying and you have to understand why he's saying what he's saying. Because it was given to Paul, that great light that was given to the Gentiles. It was such a great light, it blinded him. When you see the scales that are mentioned of falling off his eyes, okay, they were the scales of Leviathan, the pride. That was the pride of Leviathan, the darkness. The scales fell off from his eyes. And he was given the revealed word of God. There are those who say, well, there's a controversy between what Paul was ministering and what the rest of the brethren were ministering. That's right. There was. And that's what the difference was. Paul was given the revelation to give to us that we might pick up on it them who receive it by faith. There were other things that were mentioned that had to be received by faith that not everyone would receive. They're hard sayings, is what the word says. But to them who can receive, they receive it by faith. One of those things was that you have no need that a man teach you. In other words, you don't have to be under the teachings of man in the word of God. To them who are able to receive it, I, Jesus Christ himself, shall teach you. Not everyone is able to have received that. There are those who have. This is the hidden manna. Those things of which in the end, and that's what I was getting ready to tell you, Paul said we look into this mirror. A mirror is something that reflects revelation, reflection. Okay? Like a casting of the shadow. So on and so forth. Forthcomings. This is the revelation of which they at that hour looked into dimly. It wasn't given to the fullness. I can assure you, once we come into this, and that starts to come forth in the fullness, it is this fullness that transforms us, ultimately does the finished work of faith, which is what? The finished work of faith is the outcome of the transformation from mortal to immortal. That's the finished work by faith that he comes, he returns, Jesus. Look at the parables. Who is it that's casting out the net and gathering in the fish? Who is it that shuts the door when the door gets shut? The Son of Man, Jesus is the one that does these things. Well, what's that mean? It means it's the Word of God, the bread of life, the heavenly manna that is being revealed through the sons and daughters of God that the children of God, the wheat, the 30-fold and the 60-fold, come in under that anointed Word, the oil, of the brides, five bridesmaids, wise bridesmaids who receive it, they have to receive it. If they don't willingly receive that anointing, when I return, shall I find faith? It's the Messiah's week being finished that we have to receive by faith. How shall I know unless one be sent? 
You can't know this until one is sent to share it with you so that by faith you might enter into it. They were the foundation. The stones, them who come into this and rise up, are the stones that are placed upon the foundation of which is the finished work and is the barn, anointed word, that the wheat are gathered into. This you have to begin to receive by faith. And if you will, you will enter into this. You will begin to be shown by the Father that which has been hidden, the hidden manna, and that's what we are all joined and gathered into. It is not, like I said before, going to be a big magic show. Now, what takes place in and among them who have been gathered in the barn? I don't know. All right? I'm pretty certain it ain't shared with everybody else. Because it's only those who come in. All right? So, within them, hey, Whatever the Father wants, that's what's going to take place, and amen, Jesus. But it won't be to everyone out there in the world. The commotion takes place within the household of faith, not in the world. Tribulation takes place with the world, and tribulation comes upon, which is the uh, uh, trampling upon the foot of uh, men that the outer court who refuse to come in, who refuse to repent, who are also the apostate church, the Laodicean church. This is why the church of Philadelphia comes before the church of Laodicea. The church of Philadelphia is that little flock that comes together under and into the anointed word of God. This is what I was, the Father has been sharing with us, that he comes in the day of Noah, Jonah, or Noah, Jonah, and Lot. And in an Amos 9.13, you see these activities, wheat being gathered, for the wheat's even gathered in, the field is being plowed. Well, what field is that being plowed? That the seed of faith might be dropped into. <laughs> Receiving him whom God has sent, by faith, okay, the Son of Man returning, to gather us together into that church of Philadelphia, the little flock. Then the grapes are gathered and they're crushed, and what? The wine comes down from where? The mountain of God. Now these stones, this is where the stones were hewed from. They came just as he did. And if he's the stone that was hewed out of the mountain of God, the rock, then these stones, as sons and daughters, are hewed out of that same mountain. Not by the hand of man, but by the hand of God. This and whatever else the Father might have to be said in the future is is what I believe by faith I was sent to share with you, to have revealed to you, him whom God would send. Unless that one be sent, how shall I know? You cannot walk into this by faith if you don't hear it. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. But you must receive it by faith and walk in it in order to be healed by it, made whole, complete. This is love, having its faith having its perfect work in love, which makes us whole, one. So, <laughs> I love you. Uh, the Father loves us. This is how we're able to love the Father. You know, if you ever have that well up into you, oh, Father, you know, I just I love you. I love the Lord. Yeah, welling up inside you. It's because that's the love of the Father 
in us, that's the love of the Father, in us, from Him to us. That's how we're able to love Him back. So when we say that, that's really the Father saying, I love you. I, I love you. I love you. <laughs> and we should say, I love you. I love you. Okay. And we enter in his courts for praise and joy and, and thanksgiving. It's in the spirit, brother, that we're caught up in, of which is the translation and transformation that takes place. And the covering of the wheat so that she's under the protection, the palm of God, through the period of tribulation, that others will not be. The outer court, them who refuse to repent, <laughs> are not under the anointed word of God and suffer the outcome of the tribulation. We'll be united in love. It's a love feast that everyone finally by faith, but goals of everything of their own for the sake of the fellowship of this feast. We say, oh, okay, let's go. And just lay everything down, brother. That mean everybody's going to sell all their properties and home? No, please. The wisdom of God must be greater than that, okay? Yes, there probably will be some brothers who are not owning properties, who are renting places that are probably moved in with brothers that do have it. You know, for the sake of the unity and the bond of love. Uh, so all of the bunches, the full fruit, the harvest, all of it, the full harvest, can be brought into this love feast. Yes, whatever is among the wise who can see how all this, you know, they'll be given the eyes to see it. This, they'll, they'll be led by the Spirit of God to do these things. And a great outpouring of love as it was in the beginning. But we have to come into it and see it ourselves. I can't make you go back into the Word where I've told you about the Alpha and the Omega, where the Father has revealed to us these things, to make you see them. I can't do that. You, my friend, must receive it by faith and enter into it and come to that understanding by the truth of God that's in you. That's what the Spirit of the Witness of the Holy Spirit is for. <clears throat> now the fullness comes forth, which is the second part of building upon the foundation that represents the barn. And they come from the workmen of the eleventh hour who presently, according to the word of God, are standing around idly. And he says, Why are you standing around idly? Let's go. Let's get into this. Let's go. Let's move forward. You say by faith you believe that the time has come, then then walk in that faith. Believe by faith. And it shall be done unto you as you have believed, brother. It's the bride coming out of her chamber. It lasts for a three to three and a half year period of time. And after that, the barn's closed. And I pray you be gathered in and be a part of that gathering. In Jesus' name I pray and give you thanks. Father, amen. Bless them, Lord, that their ears and eyes might be opened. Amen.